In a stunning move, renowned defense attorney Mark Agnafilo walked out of a recent court hearing, fueling speculation about potential divisions within Diddy's defense team. Agnafilo, known for handling high-profile cases, unexpectedly departed mid-proceedings, sparking questions about the reasons behind his sudden exit. While lawyer departures aren't uncommon, this development suggests possible strategic shifts or internal conflicts. With Agnafilo gone, Diddy's remaining lawyers face added pressure to adapt their approach in this high-stakes, intensely scrutinized case. Things, freak-offs. Now, you can be a freak and it's not illegal, but you can't force people to do sh And this is what I'm getting at. When you have a lot of money and you have no accountability and you want to do whatever the f*** you want to do whenever the f*** you want to do it, I think you can go a little bonkers. You ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. I mean, he, he's complaining to a teenager that you don't really want to hang out with me. <sighs> okay, but he didn't do this. Just so you know, he, he didn't do this. He did not do this. He doesn't have... Oh my God. Look at all that baby oil. He didn't do this. He didn't have all these bottles of baby oil for nothing. And we fight, we'll fight every day until we don't have to fight anymore. That means when he's out of money. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government... Okay, that's just dumb. He's not afraid of the charges? Wouldn't you be afraid of the charges? Where are you? You're in fucking Rikers Island. You goddamn well better be afraid. They just ex executed two search warrants. They've got obliterated serial numbers on firearms. They've got videos and, and baby oil. You know, what he needs is somebody to tell him what the truth is. You are f***. You are absolutely f You're going to prison for the good portion of the rest of your life. I guarantee you, they've offered immunity to the people around him. Mark Akmafilo, a seasoned defense attorney with a history of representing contentious clients, was a key member of Diddy's legal team. His expertise in racketeering, trafficking, and white-collar crimes is notable, having defended figures like Keith Ranier in the infamous NXIVM case. Agnafilo's involvement underscored the severity of the charges against Diddy and the need for expert defense. Given Diddy's high profile and public interest in his past, Agnafilo's presence was crucial. And the point person behind that request and Diddy's team is defense attorney Mark Agnafilo. If that name is familiar to you, it may be because you've heard it before. He's repped several high-profile defendants, like the Nexium cult leader Keith Ranieri and Roger Ng, a former Goldman Sachs banker convicted of bribery and money laundering. We'll get to those cases in a second, but first, a bit about Agnifilo's history. He received a bachelor's degree in philosophy and political science from Connecticut College in 1986. In 1990, he received his Juris degree from Brooklyn Law School, and while there, even received the American Jurisprudence Award for Outstanding Performance in Trial Advocacy. Starting in 1998, Agnifilo began his work at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of New Jersey. There, he worked as the Chief of Violent Crime Unit and specialized in cases involving murder, money laundering, extortion, and drug trafficking. During his tenure there, Agnifilo became a nationally recognized expert in sophisticated criminal prosecutions and the RICO statute, the very same statute that Diddy is now charged under. Agnifilo stayed with the U.S. Attorney's Office until 2006 when he began work at the law office of Benjamin Braffman, who, by the way, repped Diddy in his trial regarding the New York nightclub shoot. Legal expert Bruce Rivers shed light on the serious potential consequences seen Diddy Combs may face. The federal sentencing guidelines for racketeering and trafficking charges are exceptionally strict. If convicted, Diddy could potentially spend the rest of his life in prison, a common outcome in federal cases. This trial goes beyond the typical celebrity legal battle, putting Diddy's freedom at risk. Rivers noted that in cases involving organized crime, even alleged conspiracy can lead to conviction, adding significant gravity to Diddy's legal troubles. From the freak-offs, Combs, among other things, hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims at times by their hair. And you keep in mind, these victims are going to come in and testify. Combs and the victims typically received IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion and drug use. I don't want to f him anymore. Too bad. You're going to f him some more. I need... I mean, they, they also got a thousand bottles of baby oil. <laughs> you know, they got terabytes and terabytes of uh, videos. You know, remember remember I was telling you they took they got all those electronics? 
somebody like this guy wants to preserve that. I, I, and I guarantee you, it's all. The prosecution's case against Diddy hinges on Rytheo charges, which bundle various allegations into a single framework of organized criminal activity. This strategic approach enables prosecutors to connect disparate alleged offenses, such as trafficking or coercion, under a unified narrative. For Diddy's defense team, this presents a significant challenge. They must now confront not only individual charges, but also the overarching claim of coordinated wrongdoing. To succeed, they'll need to discredit the notion of an organized structure behind these allegations, essentially questioning the applicability of RICEO laws in this case. Sean Diddy Combs will stand trial in May on his sex trafficking charges. A judge at a hearing in Manhattan set the trial date, also discussing a gag order imposed on prosecutors and the defense, telling them not to discuss the case or provide any material about the case to the media, to the public. They contend that the government leaked a damaging piece of evidence potentially against Combs uh, when a videotape from 2016 was played on CNN earlier this year. That video shows uh, Sean Combs and uh, his then girlfriend uh, Cassie in a hotel in Los Angeles. It had been a secret, private for many years, but then it came to the forefront and was played publicly on CNN. The defense contends that that tape was leaked by investigators. Prosecutors say they have no knowledge of any leak and they uh, refute the allegation that they were involved in any leaks. The judge says he will consider potentially having an evidentiary hearing to get to the bottom of that. That won't happen for some time. First, the defense and then the prosecution will submit paperwork outlining their positions. On Seen Diddy Combs, also known as Shadiddy Coles, is set to face trial on May 5 for sex trafficking and racketeering conspiracy charges. One, a Manhattan federal court judge. Abron Supermanian confirmed the trial date and reinforced a gag order, prohibiting both sides from discussing the case or sharing materials with the media or public. This gag order comes after Cole's defense team alleged that the government leaked key evidence, including a previously unreleased 2016 video aired on CNN. The video shows Coles and his then-girlfriend, Cassie, in a Los Angeles hotel. While the defense claims investigators leaked the footage, Prosecutors deny any involvement. Tape recordings in Diddy's homes. Diddy appears to be a voyeur that likes to spy on people on his hidden cameras, which are wired in secret places all over his mansions. Little Rod's lawsuit revealed that Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every single room of his home, including in the bathrooms and shower heads. The evidence revealed that Diddy had recordings of several celebrities and artists engaging in illegal activity. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person who has attended his freak-off parties, so the entire hip-hop industry could implode before our very eyes as the feds review the evidence. It was revealed that Diddy allegedly has freak-off footage of Beyonce. See, in Diddy Combs, legal team has maintained a steadfast denial of all allegations since the investigation began. Lead attorneys Mark Agnifilo and Tenny Gagos have publicly emphasized the lack of concrete evidence, arguing that the prosecution relies heavily on circumstantial evidence and character attacks. They contend that these are insufficient to prove guilt. The defense strategy appears focused on framing the case as a credibility contest, casting doubt on witnesses and allegations. By portraying Diddy as an innocent bystander rather than a mastermind, they aim to sway public opinion and potentially influence the jury. Not all the time they say this, but they say this this is going our way. Not the bail. They say we have them. We got a lot of people who are going to talk and say that this is what Diddy was about. And some people may pass it off as hip hop culture, uh, but it is a series of felonies and Rico. What do they have wrong? They they did say in court today, they've talked to 50 witnesses. We said the same thing. We've been doing a parallel investigation at every single step of the way, talking to every single per we're, there's the same kind of universe of people here that he's been around. We've been we're talking we're talking to people to show that we have a case. He's fighting. He's fighting, he's innocent, and he's gonna be able to show it. Innocent means he didn't do any of the wrong things. Not guilty means they can't make the case. He's right? innocent. So you think he did none of these things? He was never present in any of these activities? This wasn't his lifestyle? But, but, but a lifestyle and being present in activities doesn't mean he committed a crime. Unless those activities and that lifestyle are criminal. 
But those activities and the lifestyle is not criminal. What was notable today, what my partner Mark said in court, is they never once said that these women didn't consent to what happened. Not once. Defense attorney Tenny Gagos has referenced high-profile cases involving Harvey Weinstein and R. Kelly, highlighting key differences. Unlike those cases, Gagos notes that Diddy's case lacks concrete physical evidence. By emphasizing this distinction, Gagos seeks to differentiate Diddy's defense and underscore the largely circumstantial nature of the allegations. This approach aims to refocus attention on the evidentiary facts rather than public perception. And raunchy. People were getting high. There were girls swimming topless, young looking girls that were, you know, not dressed. We moved to another part of the house so that he wouldn't be exposed um, to what was going on. In later years, Diddy implemented a curfew for children. The kids had like an hour left. So get extra comfortable. But this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't want to come to. I think he's a monster. This week, Houston-based lawyer Tony Busby says more than 120 people are coming forward with claims Diddy sexually abused them. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. Did Diddy assault you in any way? When you say assault, uh, I, I don't know the exact definition, um, but he put his arm around me in an uncomfortable way. Diddy is now behind bars facing federal charges of sex trafficking and racketeering. He denies all claims of sexual abuse, including a Independent legal experts have offered insights, stressing that a conviction could result in a significant sentence due to the gravity of the trafficking and ratio charges, coupled with stringent federal sentencing guidelines. They point out that the alleged combination of misconduct and organized activity makes this case exceptionally severe, potentially setting a landmark precedent in high-profile cases. These expert opinions contribute to public perception and lend credibility to the prosecution's case, intensifying pressure on Diddy's defense team. As these analyses shape public opinion and potentially influence jurors, the question remains, can Diddy's defense effectively counter these influential statements and navigate the heightened scrutiny? Height of his career is still very much so a icon and influential figure. Mm -hmm. So she's just a young girl from Northern California who's going to believe that he right. had done something to her like this. So she didn't tell anybody. She did not hire an attorney. All she did was uh, make the police report in the hopes that maybe the police would try to investigate and come up with anything. But she said she kind of felt from the police that they were disregarding what she was saying, even without saying Mr. Holmes' name. So she didn't feel any confidence that revealing his name would have done anything. Sure, sure. I mean, but there's a police report. Yeah. I mean, that fact in of itself is a big deal because when you're talking about going back in time and talking about these allegations from other alleged victims, you know, there's not a lot of police reports, but you guys actually have one. And is that going to be revealed? Are we going to be able to see it? Yes. As soon as soon as uh, I file my lawsuit in civil court, I will be attaching the criminal complaint that was made. I'll attach the number so everyone can see that this is a real number and can go to the police department there and request their own copy of that police report that was made back in 2018. Well, that's going to be a huge deal when it happens, obviously, so we want to follow up on that. Um, did Mr. Combs have any reaction? Do you know if he was interviewed? I mean, he was named in the police report? Um, I don't think so. Um, based on what she said, she really felt that the police were trying to bury this and disregard her claims mm -hmm. and not really investigate, which is another reason why a lot of victims don't report these things to the police. We have to address the elephant in the room is that we have victims, especially women, who go to the police, who are typically men, who don't actually investigate these things. They victim blame, they victim shame, and women don't feel safe or even protected to even make these claims because they don't think they'll be taken seriously, nor will they claim their claims. The high profile nature of Diddy's case has sparked intense interest among legal analysts who highlight the significant impact of misconduct and organized crime allegations in celebrity trials. Experts note that Rye CO charge cases, particularly those involving high-profile defendants, can establish precedents for how aggressively the justice system addresses alleged wrongdoing in the entertainment industry. Widespread media coverage, 
fueled by analysts' commentary on potential outcomes and defense strategies, complicates jury selection and courtroom tactics. Finding impartial jurors is already challenging in high-profile cases. Prolonged media scrutiny can create a pre-trial perception of guilt, influencing public opinion. Because I think it's important to point this out. When you highlight and you talk about some of the charges that have been leveled against them, and you see some of the stuff that's being said about them. Look at this right here. Former Danity Kane singer Aubrey O'Day writes, I never thought I would see this day, she told TMZ. We all buried this inside of us in order to be able to keep going. And not just me, but victims you don't even know yet. We're all processing what that type of vindication can actually feel like now. Every conversation I've had with victims last night has been beyond moving on all levels. That was Aubrey O'Day. You know 50 Cent was going to make sure his voice was heard. Clowning P. Diddy. Taunting him, basically, because he's long taunted P. Diddy for years over the, uh, over the harrowing allegations against him. And what does he say here? This is yesterday, 50 Cent. Here I am keeping good company with the Drew Barrymore TV show. And I don't have 1,000 bottles of lube at the house. 50 Cent was referencing the over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and personal lubricants for the freak-offs that the indictment revealed were allegedly found during the raid of Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami back in March. Legal experts caution that a conviction could result in a life sentence for Diddy, given the severity of the charges. The case encompasses racketeering, trafficking, and transportation for prostitution allegations, carrying substantial penalties. Specifically, the trafficking charge has a 15-year mandatory minimum sentence and potentially life imprisonment. Analysts note that even if the defense creates reasonable doubt for individual accusations, challenges persist. RICO charges allow prosecutors to connect loosely related allegations, portraying them as part of an organized criminal structure. This approach complicates defense efforts to isolate incidents. The combination of expert opinions and public sentiment pressures the defense to develop innovative strategies, countering the prosecution's narrative effectively. Each element of their case may influence broader discussions on accountability in high-profile cases. have been indicted more often than not. I mean, what did you say the number? 95% of the time. Uh, they're going to they're gonna get you. You're going to be convicted of something. They have, and that's what Diddy is facing. Unlimited resources. It is hard to match that if you are a defendant in a case. But it has been done, as we told you uh, at the beginning of the show. John DeLorean case. John DeLorean did, so it can be done, but uh, can it be done in this particular case? We said that Diddy has incredible resources that will help, but if the case is as strong as it appears at this point, or at least as the feds have presented it, you'd think there's no chance. Uh, but maybe they're not presenting exactly <laughs> what they have at this point? Well, the thing is, it's usually, for in terms of public perception, the strongest the day the indictment comes out because you haven't heard the defense. Indictment alleges Diddy's involvement in a criminal enterprise encompassing mistreatment of guests and obstruction of justice. Legal analyst L. Honig highlights the defense's significant challenge due to the combination of rice EO and trafficking charges, which increase potential sentencing. Diddy's detention at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center, MDC, presents a stark contrast to his previous lifestyle. The MDC is notorious for restrictive conditions, limited freedoms, and austere living arrangements, particularly challenging for high-profile detainees. Public interest in Diddy's case remains high, fueled by comparisons to other celebrity trials. This scrutiny intensifies pressure on his legal team to effectively address interconnected allegations. Federal guidelines offer limited room for plea bargains in coercive trafficking cases, making significant prison time likely if convicted. The trial will test Diddy's defense against federal prosecutors, particularly in a high-profile context where public perception often diverges from legal realities. Federal sentencing guidelines for ratio and trafficking charges pose significant challenges, often resulting in lengthy or life sentences upon conviction. Diddy faces decades in prison, given the cumulative nature of Roycio sentences. 
Legal experts note the inflexibility of federal guidelines, leaving little room for leniency in organized crime cases. To mitigate the severity of penalties, Diddy's defense must dismantle each charge and counter the organized wrongdoing narrative.